All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me for another Spin That Shit podcast. We got a great guest today. We're going to do something a little different. Uh, we're always dealing with musicians, artists, and that sort of thing. Um, but this is more behind the scenes. This is a, a designer, Western clothing, makes rhinestone suits. Jerry Atwood's with us. He's in my home state, so I w- took a trip up to his studio, kind of showed me around how he does things. And uh, it's very cool. Uh, it's a vintage thing. Um, these suits are works of art. He's got several over 100 hours in one suit, you know, and these custom designs. Everyone from, you know, done stuff for Post Malone to Brandy Carlisle. I mean, he's got a list. So uh, he does a great job. So I uh, appreciate him having me up there. And uh, But before we talk to Jerry, I do want to say thanks for the support. We have a Patreon page. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff on our YouTube. I'm on Instagram a lot, Facebook, that sort of thing. So all those social media. Uh, so tag us. And um, there is the Coyote Radio Show. I've only done two episodes. Uh, you can find that on Mixcloud. That's the only place you can hear it. I'll share it to all the social media pages when every episode comes up. But uh, basically, Mixcloud is the only place legally where I can have the rights to play anybody's music that I want. Anyone as famous as Johnny Cash to whoever, a local band here. So, um, yeah, so they're hour-long segments. There's a little bit of commentary in there in between, but for the most part, it's all about the music in the the country realm, folk country, blues mixed with uh, whatever, honky-tonk, hillbilly, uh, Appalachia type stuff. Uh, I got it covered in there. so. So keep an eye out on that. And uh, yeah, let's go talk to Jerry. We're here with Jerry Lee Atwood, owner operator of Western or Union, Union Western. Western. Yes, gotta get that in my mind. Well, it's funny because um, we always get emails from people in like the Middle East, like sending <laughs> us documents. Uh, because they think we're Western Union. <laughs> yeah. um, so they send us like their uh, like photo ID and like they're like, please transfer this money. Um, and my business partner is like, uh, we're a clothing company. So and it's weird because I don't I don't quite understand how they go to like <laughs> unionwestern.com and see you know clothing and think like, oh, this is the money transfer place, you know? Right, exactly. It's so strange. And the, maybe... lo- the logos are so different too. Well, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. It's just funny. Um, but, you know, the name Union Western actually, when we started, um, so my business partner is Joe David Walters and he lives in London and I had made him a suit a while back. Um, and he loved the suit that I made him, and he wanted to go into business because he said he'd, al- he'd always wanted to do like a Western wear company. And, um, you know, m- I was doing a Western wear company called um, Hoosier Built. So it was Jerry Lee's Hoosier Built. So it was just, you know, my name. And, uh, you know, he, he knows a lot of people in the industry. So um, he was like, this would be a a great way that we could team up and like reach more people with what you do. And right. um, so we went into business together, but our initial idea was it for it to be like a union of Western wear makers. So we had reached out to like other Western wear makers about starting kind of like, you know, a fashion house, if you will, where, um, you know, somebody would be, you know, I have a lot of friends who are Western wear makers. So like, you know, my friends in Nashville could be like, you know, so-and-so for Union Western, like that sort of thing. Right. Uh, but everybody was pretty content with what they were already doing. So we just said, all right, well, we'll just, you know, it'll just be us. You know? <laughs> so I, I guess it's somewhat fortuitous, you know. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I think I think I've done fairly well, you know, with, with this. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's definitely eye-catching. Uh, we should probably back up a little bit and explain if you don't know, most of the podcasts of all, not every episode, but 95% of the episodes are all about musicians and their art and their work. So this is kind of a tangent off. Um, it's still, it's art form, but you're working with musicians. Mm-hmm. You're designing suits and fashion mm-hmm. for them uh, in a very unique way. So we'll, we'll get into that and hopefully, I don't know, we'll, we'll get the video camera in a little closer and show some. Yeah 
Same. You know, some snapshot, <clears throat> snapshots of some stuff. Um, so how, can you back up? Like, how did this all start? <laughs> how did you get into the whole um, design? So I worked at a uh, coffee shop, um, actually just down the street at 54th and College, uh, about 20 years ago. And um, for whatever reason, uh, I had gotten really into hand embroidery. Um, I was an art school dropout and uh, just was trying to find my voice as an artist uh, while working at coffee shops. Um, and I always said uh, I could work in a coffee shop without the art degree. That was kind of my joke about why I dropped out of art school. <laughs> um, so I would bring in these hand embroidery projects and I just got really into hand embroidery. It was just something different. You know, I love drawing and painting, but this was just something kind of unusual and different. And, um, you know, I just enjoyed doing it. And uh, a customer came in one day and, you know, he, he had always seen me doing these embroideries and tucking them under a counter, under the counter as soon as the customer walked up. Um, and this was, you know, 2001 or so. Uh, and he said, uh, I was at Half Price Books and I found this book about the history of Western wear. Um, and you should check it, you know, check it out. So he lent it to me. Um, and, you know, flipping through the pages, it brought back all these memories of uh, going to Nashville with my family when I was younger. And my dad was a huge record collector. So he had, you know, I don't know, thousands and thousands of records, but he, he loved old country. So he had, you know, lots of old country records. So he had uh, Porter Wagner and Webb Pierce and, you know, like all the people in their Western suits on the covers. Um, and just like the nostalgia factor, um, you know, kind of excited me. Uh, and I wasn't a huge fan of country music at the time because it was kind of like, uh, my parents lame music, but now, <laughs> now I'm like really into it, obviously. But, um, as you could tell, like, you know, I think we were listening to George Jones radio on Spotify when you walked in, but, um, uh, but you know, I just thought like, wow, it'd be really cool if I can make one of these, you know, Western shirts or eventually a suit. Um, so I just, you know, uh, taught myself how to sew and just kind of went for it. And that's how I ended up here. <laughs> that's a pretty wild story. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, well, and you know, like when I started, um, and like when I really started making shirts that were wearable, you know, like I made a bunch of shirts that were you know, nobody would want to be seen in public in them, you know. But um, when I started making things that, you know, I was like, oh, you know, people people started to ask about it. Like, oh, where'd you get that shirt? Sure, oh, I made it, you know. Um, so once I started to get, you know, comfortable sewing and feeling like the stuff I was making was good, um, I really kind of expected the peak of what I'm doing to be outfitting like a local country band. Um, and, you know, thought like, well, maybe they'll go on tour and people will see it and, you know, get a yeah. couple orders. Um, but, you know, in the early 2000s, there wasn't like a huge scene, you know, here, like people wearing fancy Western wear. I mean, they're still not really here, but right. um, it just wasn't like, it just wasn't super popular at the time. But I just enjoyed doing it and just kept doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely come back around. Um that whole vintage attitude yeah, towards things yeah. has definitely resurfaced more. Right. Um, yeah, same thing. I remember seeing the suits and stuff on record albums and oh, things yeah, growing up. Yeah. And, I mean, look at the stuff Elvis was wearing, you know, oh, yeah. back in the day yeah. to now. You've you've worked with uh, so many so far. It seems like a, like Charlie Crockett. Mm -hmm. You did a Post Malone. Mm -hmm. What's some other big names? Uh, Little Nas X, um, like the suit for, that he wore in the Old Town Road video. Okay. Um, uh, I've also made a suit for Little Nas X for um, the MTV Video Music Awards uh, in 2019, um, which is a suit that he won his very first award in, which was kind of cool. Um, uh, Orville Peck, I've made a couple suits for him. Yeah. Uh, Margot Price. Um, Nikki Lane, uh, Joshua Headley. Um, I noticed you did a jean jacket for Yellow Wolf. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I like Yellow Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple things for him. Um, 
Yeah, he's a funny guy. Um, I, I don't remember how he found, I mean, it must have been Instagram that he found my work. Uh, but yeah, like he's, have you met him before? Yeah, a couple times, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's buddies with uh, Josh oh. Hadley and they did some work together. Oh, yeah. That might have yeah. been where they. Oh, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, but I just remember he called me one day and was just like, hey, man. You know? <laughs> He's just a he's just a quirky guy, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was supposed to be. I think the piece I made was going to be on the cover of his album, one of his albums, and it didn't end up being on there. But I think he wore it in a video or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think he did a little whole tour wearing it or something. Uh huh. Yeah. And someone stole one of his jackets. I think Hopefully. it might have been that one. <laughs> really? Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember there was some something about. Yeah, I think it was that one actually. Yeah. So everyone's trying to get a piece of your work. They're stealing it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I actually made um, two others that were like basically identical for um, the people in his band at the time. So he had like a DJ, and then I think he had like a guitarist. Yeah. So I made I made the um, or embroidered the vests for them as well. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't know that they ended up touring with them. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can't remember either. Yeah, that's been 2015, something like that. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. So what's, the, for, you know, a guy like me, I, I don't know, this is out of my realm. Uh, what are what are the steps in designing this? Obviously, you, you draw something out what you have in mind as far as the design, but as far as the hands-on, you got to measure the person? Mm -hmm. you know, like, what's the... Yeah, so usually, um, you know, someone will come to me with, a suit that you know an idea for a suit that they want and usually it's somewhat vague you know what they want they'll be like you know i want it to have roses and skulls and you know whatever they want whatever motifs and they want it to be this color and so you know we go back and forth a little bit like i'll sketch i'll do a couple sketches and show them show them to the client and they'll come back and see you know, oh, that's cool, maybe we put this, you know, another motif, whatever. So there's usually like a little bit of back and forth. And then from there, um, I'm almost always working remotely, you know, like, um, you know, most, most artists just don't have the money or just don't have the time to come here and get measured. Uh, so I'll send them to like a tailor who will measure them. Um, or in the case of stylists, a lot of times stylists already have their measurements yeah um because they're putting so many clothes on them and uh you know from there i'll just um you know draft a pattern and uh lay it all out and you know like you know as you can see here i cut all the fabric um you know mock up all the embroidery designs embroider it on these vintage machines uh rhinestone um you know it's a it's a pretty big process and then you know the hand to, you know a suit a handmade suit is probably 70 percent um hand sewn like there's a lot of all the you know padding and all the stitching inside is um mostly done by hand so it's a pretty labor intensive project um <laughs> or process and uh i've averaged it out uh, a suit typically takes about 120 hours from start to finish to make. And that excludes like the design time, the time spent, you know, going back and forth with the client and emailing them. So, um, you know, people, I think people have an idea that I'm like rolling in it, you know, cause my suits <laughs> are kind of expensive, but at the end of the day, you know, overhead's high. And right. um, so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good living, but it's, you know, I'm not like a CEO of a bank or anything like yeah. that, you know? I think once they see the actual process and like you said, how many hours are spent, it's like, okay, um, now you understand. What right. It costs yeah. This, you know? yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people that are, um, you know, that want a suit just to like, wear to an event, you know, like that aren't celebrities or that aren't musicians and they just want to wear it to like a wedding or whatever. A lot of times, you know, it's a big investment for them. Um, and they're, a lot of times kind of on the fence about dropping that kind of money on a suit and then you know once they see it they're like you know holy crap like this is <laughs> incredible like i get a, i get that feedback a lot of people that didn't quite know what they were what to expect and when they get it they're 
they feel like it's a piece of art, um, you know, that they'll pass down. So that, that always makes me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine getting that suit for the first time. Yeah. I mean, I have, I've only made myself one suit. Um, and yeah, like when you wear it, you're like, you kind of feel a bit invincible, you know? <laughs> uh, and I've only made myself one suit because as the you know, old saying goes, the cobbler's children have no shoes. So um, I made a shirt for my kid, which he grew out of in like you know, six months. Because um, <laughs> I had this idea, like when I had a kid, I was like, oh, I'm going to make him all this cool Western wear. And he's going to be the coolest kid at school. And then, you know, I made him one thing that he grew out of. And I'm like, I don't know. And, he, you know, and he was really little, so it has like... Um, you know, stains for <laughs> yeah. him because he's a messy eater, so. <laughs> That's crazy. What's the most time you've spent on one suit? Uh, probably the suit that I did for um, David Harbour. I don't know if you saw that one. It was, um, so David Harbour plays Hopper on Stranger Things. Oh, uh, I did see that one. Yeah. I did. And he wore that to the um, season four premiere of Stranger Things back in mid-May. Um, and that suit, I mean, that was crazy. Like that. There's a lot of graphics on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, yeah, that was the most embroidery I've ever done. The most rhinestones I've ever put on anything. Um, and it weighed a ton. Uh, and he, David said, like, there was some interview with him. I think it was the interview in Vogue. And, you know, he said that, like, you know, he, he didn't know what to expect. And when he got it, it was like this. Um, you know, this, you know, kind of piece of wearable art that had a lot of like life to it, you know, which was kind of a cool compliment, you know, cause you don't, until you see it like up close and in person, you don't realize like there's a lot of textures in it and a lot of like, right. you know, I put, I try to use like fun linings and, um, you know, cool details inside too. So it's not just like, you know, I, I always want my pieces to be Nice, as nice to look at on the inside as they are on the outside so yeah 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 I obviously I've looked at all, a lot of your work online and being here and just seeing some of these sample pieces and feeling them in your hand it's uh it's totally different it, oh yeah the whole for sure feel yeah. to it and it's got a nice weight to it mm -hmm. uh, yeah now I want one <laughs> <laughs> and it's also cool to see it like you know because I I see it in my studio light um, which, you know, when I, when it's covered in rhinestones, you don't see as much of the sparkle. Um, so it's always cool to see something like on stage and it takes on a whole new life when the lights hit it and yeah. the rhinestones refract. Um, you know, it, lo it looks like it's alive, you know, so that's always cool to see. Huh. Well, that's great. I, I'm glad, uh, I stopped by and you fill me in on this. Can yeah. You, can you? We're gonna pull the camera down. You mind showing me a few? Yeah, things? absolutely. Let me grab the camera. So these are suits. Um, these two suits here are suits that I'm working on right now for an uh, American businessman who's taking his family out to um, Burning Man. Uh, so they wanted fleur de lis and uh, peacocks, and then on the back. Um, this is his logo for his uh, mobile saloon that he had built custom for uh, Burning Man this year, which the saloon shoots flames out the top and has a DJ booth on the, on the second floor. So um, it's pretty wild and I think they'll look really good in their suits. Um, and this one's a little more finished so you can see, you know, some of the detail that I put inside um, with the inside pocket and, you know, that's my label. Um, and our label was actually designed by uh, Daniel Romano. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. Um, Canadian uh, kind of psych musician, but he started out as more of like a country musician. Um, and then this piece here is something I made a while ago. So um, I had made this for a customer uh, who wanted something that was um, based on a dress that nudie um, had made for his wife bobby uh, which had a very similar eagle and flower motif and it was on white and uh 
they had just had a child and were like really self-conscious about their body and this has like this huge slit which i thought would look really cool and sexy but <laughs> I, they d disagreed so um this is like the, one of the only pieces i've ever had returned to me um but it was you know about their like self-image um but in any case uh, I'm glad I have it because it's um, it's been a cool piece just to like loan out for events and it was in um, the Vogue shoot that I did uh, last, or a couple of years ago. So and then um, yeah, you can see here this these are the pieces in progress. So um, you know all of this gets uh, cut, embroidered. Um, you know, this this is a men's suit, so it's gonna get pad stitching inside, and you know, it's got a uh, you know a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and then the other thing I'm working on is this uh, wild um, uh, dragon suit. So this is the sleeve that's pretty much complete. It has some gold fringe and some black rhinestones. Um, but lots of dragons, uh, and the back's really cool. Let me find the back where he at. So this uh, performer's name is Tennessee Williams. So that's the back of it. That's wild. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a lot of work. You know, like I said, it's hours and hours of embroidery and rhinestones, and uh, you know, then it all gets assembled and sent to the customer so yeah cool mind showing me one of the uh machines you work on oh yeah absolutely so um the uh, machines that i most commonly work on are um, for the embroidery or the chain stitch embroidery machines so this is a singer 114 w103 and this particular one is from the 60s um but these are what i do the majority of my uh, embroidery on and then um you know over here we have our just regular domestic machines so these are not domestic uh industrial just like straight stitch machines so these just you know, do straight stitch and i do all my assembly on these um and then you know the ironing station so how old are these so these are from um this one's from the 40s and this one's from the late 20s I just seek out the old machines. I, just, I think they they look cool and you know they work better than <laughs> new machines. They so. don't make them like that anymore. That's true. They really don't. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah. And, uh, showing me around. This has been great. Absolutely. And thanks for coming in. <laughs>